So please give a warm round of applause for Jessalyn Leach, accompanied by Monica. Hello, hello. How are we doing tonight? Um, leading up to this event, I was posed with a question, which was, if the world was to end on May 2nd, what do you need to get out? What are the things that you need to heal? And um, this next piece is, it's a really difficult piece for me to get through, but I need to heal. And so I'm ready to let it go. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for supporting the youth. This is so amazing for them. You have no idea how transformative this is. And so thank you. <laughs> I have a problem. Okay, well, if I'm being honest, I have several problems, maybe even lots of problems. But I have one that seems to be reoccurring ever since I was little. I'm constantly trying to fix things that are broken. As a child, I would take apart my walkie-talkie just to figure out why it stopped working, only to realize all it needed was a new set of batteries. And now, as an adult, I'm constantly trying to fix the people in my life constantly trying to help them turn their past hardships into triumphs so they can finally let go. I even go as far as to do this with myself. I wake up every day grateful to be alive, but it's quickly followed by the feeling of fear, an impulse to check my phone for any missed calls informing me that a loved one has passed, informing me that you have passed. And even though I know that one day it's inevitable, I find myself grateful each day it hasn't happened. But that's when I think of you. I think of how proud you are of all the work I do, of all the time I spend getting people to break down their own walls, knowing that I haven't found the strength to open the closet doors wide enough to let my own demons fall out. But I've been holding these skeletons back for about 10 years now, and I'm beginning to choke on these words like bones I've kept buried on the back shelf of my throat. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I struggled to separate my mother from the addict, but I don't know the difference between the two. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that it's hard for me to see beyond the scars on your face, the ones that were caused by your nervous tics, caused by your need to scratch and pick, caused by nights you spent sleepless in search of dreams that gave me nightmares. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry that it's hard for me to hug you, but each time I embrace you, I feel the burn on my knees from all the nights I knelt, praying to a God I'm still not sure is real, but, but still being thankful each morning you came home. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I'm still struggling to separate my mother from the addict. So some days I want to yell and scream at you, but some days I just want to hold you and reassure you that waking up this morning was worth it. But most days, well most days I just wish I had a mother. And I wonder why it's been left to me to be the parent that you could never be. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry that it has to come out like this. But I don't know how to talk to you anymore, or maybe I never really did. Maybe that's why it's so uncomfortable for you to break down in front of me when you tell me how much you hate your life. And it kills me, because I know that taking you apart and putting you back together again can't help you, that putting new batteries in you won't fix you, that there's nothing I can do to save you. Mom, I'm sorry. I'm not saying this to hurt you. Believe me, I don't want to add to the lists of reasons why you wish you hadn't woken up this morning. I just need you to hear me. I've tried ignoring your addiction for too long now. I've tried pretending it doesn't exist. But I've spent 10 years now picking up the pieces you've left behind. And there's no more room for any more secrets on the back shelf of my throat. These skeletons want to come out and receive a proper burial like this one. This one that you dropped during a seizure after you'd been gone for four days and four nights with no sleep. Or the one when, at 17 years old, I knew paramedics by first name because I saw them more than my own father. But this one I even had to keep from you when I had to play mother for my little brother and explain to him why we never had enough food, but why we were always somehow stocked with aluminum foil and straws. 
and in the midst of all these secrets, I've come up with answers to questions I never had the courage to ask you. And since we're being honest, well, I'm still afraid of answers. But even through all of this, I'm never able to let you slip from my mind because I'm reminded each morning I check my phone for that one missed call. And every night when I go to sleep, I worry that's why we haven't spoken to each other. It saddens me because I know that I might not get another day to make things right between us. You might not wake up tomorrow, or you might not go to sleep tonight, and I know that one day I will wake up to that one missed call. But before I do, I hope you find your purpose in this world and decide to start living it again. I hope our skeletons will get to dance with each other while you find the strength to pull yourself back together again. But most importantly, I hope we never end up like those broken walkie-talkies, two pieces of the same set, designed to communicate with each other, but still finding ways to break each other down and reasons why we can't hear anything but static when we try to connect. Too stubborn to realize that maybe they never needed fixing in the first place. Maybe all they needed was someone to take them from the back of the closet and give them a second chance. And maybe, just maybe, all they needed was a new set of batteries. Thank you.